Welcome to the Healthy Family Law Attorney. I'm Tom Marks with the Marks Law Firm, and I'm glad to have you on board. Today, we're going to talk about timesharing during the holidays. And so I want you to know that my passion is to provide hope and help to your family because your family matters. So what happens during the holidays when you're supposed to have time sharing with your children and your spouse or significant other refuses to allow you to have the kids with you? Well, there's a couple of different scenarios here. One is, do you already have a time sharing schedule? Do you have a parenting plan in place? Is there a court order, either temporary time sharing or a permanent time sharing schedule? or is it too early in the process? Maybe you filed for divorce or you're about to file and there's no, nothing in place, nothing saying exactly who has the kids for what periods of time during the holidays. And I know this can be incredibly stressful. And so I wanna provide some hope and some help to you in this process. So let's first talk about what if you have a court order in place? It says, okay, you've got the kids on a certain uh, number of days. We've got Christmas coming up and Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, who's got what? What about New Year's Eve? What about New Year's Day? And you and your spouse, you and your significant other do not agree. Okay, there's a court order. Of course, your spouse should agree. It's in writing. Well, 35 years of practice in the family law area um, has shown me that despite court orders, people don't always agree. And even though you can enforce it, you probably are not going to be able to get it enforced in time for the holidays. So what do you do? This is a tough one. Okay. The courts are not going to consider time sharing during the holidays to be an emergency. So the likelihood of getting uh, an emergency order or an expedited hearing is very remote. So what's the next best thing? So you're gonna want to document everything with your spouse. You're gonna, you're gonna certainly reach out, you're gonna try to communicate with your, your significant other, your partner, your spouse, and try to resolve it in an amicable way. That's the best way. Put it in writing. Email better. Text is okay. Um, but you need to email them to confirm what exactly is happening because you're going to need to document that for later use in court. Your lawyer is going to want you to communicate. Well, number one, what's in the best interest of the minor children? You're going to document that always having the at the top forefront of your mind, you're doing this because it's in the best interest of the minor children and you're gonna kind of thread that through your email to your, your spouse or, or partner. Number two, you're going to realize that the court is going to see this um, email, this written communication at some point. So you're gonna write it as if the judge is looking at it or is going to look at it and so you're, you're gonna avoid using any kind of profanity, any type of threat. You're just gonna stay very calm and, and present and keep that best interest of the minor children at the forefront. A couple of other rules in this is, um, number one, don't send an email when you're mad. Don't send an email when you're tired. You might even not even want to put in the person's email address that you're sending it to until after you've had a chance to review the email and, and make sure it's exactly what you wanted to say. Um, it's not a bad idea if you uh, have any doubts about it to run it past your lawyer um, and your lawyer can give you some good input on um, things to say or not to say in the email. That's if you have a court order in place, because what's going to happen is in, unfortunately, but it's not going to happen until the new year, the court, there's going to be a hearing on it. The court's going to look back. Um, you may have had uh, airline tickets that you couldn't use. Uh, you couldn't take the children because your, your spouse 
wouldn't give them to you or took them somewhere. Um, if they took them out of state and you think they might be trying to deprive you of your of not only your time sharing but actually taking them um, against a court order uh, with the intent not to return them could be a, a federal parental kidnapping type situation. Again, talk to your lawyer about that. Uh, probably beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about in this video. If you don't have a court order in place, then we call it what we call de facto. It's the fact of you've got to try to work out some situation with your spouse. Again, I'm going to recommend that you coordinate with your spouse as, as best you can. Um, try to reach agreement. Um, it's it's communication skills are so important in this. Not making threats, but really trying to appeal to your spouse's interest in the welfare of the children. Okay, so again, you're gonna you're gonna document all this, and I have a a prior four video series on time sharing and the 20 factors that the court takes into consideration um, in awarding time sharing. So uh, I would recommend looking at those four um, videos in that four part series because um, that will really give you a lot of information about this. But it's what I say, your, your spouse or significant other may win what I call a skirmish or a battle but they may ultimately lose the war. Okay, so what do you do practically though in the interim? And now you're gonna be without your children for the holidays. The reality is that is horrendous, no question. So, but it is the reality. So how do you make the best of it? All right, one is I think you reach out to um, a support group. You have family, friends, maybe a therapist. So um, it's really important to try to plan ahead, try to get agreement as far in advance as possible. Again, documenting if there is an agreement or not. And if there's an agreement, I really like to try to put it in writing where both parties can sign it. So that's a, say, a temporary time sharing schedule for, can be Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, any other holidays, summer contact, whatever, um, on a temporary basis until you actually see a judge. Okay, so I'm really about what is the healthy way to approach this? Um, you, you could try to take this from the perspective of this is an opportunity for you to do some things that you might not have been able to do. Um, if the kids had been with you. Um, you might want to go see somebody, a family member, a friend, travel, do something like that, um, that you might not have been able to do. Some movies, relax, do things with friends like that. But do pick out things that you feel would keep you busy, keep you healthy. Um, I'm a big believer in really quality books, um, meditating, prayer, gratitude, um, maybe writing down five things that you're really grateful for, and then just focusing on those five things, knowing that that's gonna help you get through the holidays, and then you can address uh, the issues with your attorney um, to do what you need to do uh, in the new year. Okay, I also think it's important to take time to reflect, uh, maybe to journal, uh, maybe to find just joy in, in, in the season, joy in silence and in, in um, time by yourself to recharge the batteries. You may want to join a, a service project, uh, feeding the homeless or something that can help uh, other families during the holidays because when you get your mind on helping others and off yourself, that can be uh, incredibly powerful and helpful to you also. Okay, and finally, I would suggest that you take that time also to prepare for the return of the children. Um, you can ha still have a Christmas or a Hanukkah or a celebration with them when they return. So go ahead and get a tree. Go ahead and make sure you have the, the presents available for them. 
make it a celebration, make it meaningful. Don't focus on the bad of what happened, but focus on the present and what you're gonna do with your children together. I hope this is helpful. If it has been of any help to you, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. Would love it if you uh, hit that um, like button or leave a comment. If you have any questions or any suggestions as to uh, future videos, just let me know. I'd love to uh, hear those and uh, make videos to answer any future questions. So. Thanks so much uh, for being part of the channel. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thanks.